Hey everybody, this is your boy, the host with the most, but humble, and I do mean humble, the Nostradamus, aka Derek, and I'm here, of course, on a Friday to give you the hungry, happy, healthy people here at a WrestleCram. Of course, this is Axe WrestleCram. If you're watching it today, you're watching it tomorrow, you're watching it next week. I truly do thank you from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my loins. I truly do thank you. Without you guys, it truly wouldn't be me. Thank you so much for watching this show. Thank you so much for allowing me to do this. How about this? How about that? Oh, and I got, like I said, I got so much stuff going on. I'm trying to gravitate and get everything back together to the WrestleCram uh, 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 universe. But, you know, slowly but surely, I am getting things back to where I needed to. But until now, we're just going to get the X WrestleCram stuff going on. And, of course, the gripe. Show we're gonna get that as well. Don't forget that's gonna be on Saturdays. I will have that show for you guys on Saturday. Okay, so if you don't know anything about the show, anything about this show, uh, I put a uh feed out on the community tab on uh Sundays at ten o'clock. You can go and get your questions in uh, until probably Thursday, Wednesday, give or take. And your boy will answer those questions. I most definitely do not mind. If you want your questions answered, you can get your questions answered on there. And I will, you know, talk to, talk about it or whatnot. <laughs> so, uh, other than that, um, don't forget uh, to like, share, and subscribe. You guys, like, share, and subscribe. I know it's not a lot of content right now being developed on the channel. But I promise you, uh, 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 you will get... Uh, 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 Big helping eventually uh, when I get everything situated and back to where I need it to be. Um, I promise you that. I promise you that will happen. Uh, don't forget that uh, I am on a lot of uh, uh, social media sites. Uh, go to the information tab. You can check out all of that stuff that I'm on. Also, you can also Google me. You can Google WrestleCram. Uh, I am on there, which is really creepy. So you can check me out over there uh, to Google me, or you can check the information tab. Uh, I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. I'm, I'm putting uh, stuff everywhere. Usually I will uh, pick the top three uh, questions of uh, this on uh, so many other sites. So you can always check me out, okay? Uh, but uh, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get to the very first question. Uh, I think I got about, um, everybody wanted to uh, ask questions to go around. So I think I got a, a, a lot of uh, meaty questions to go around. So let's get on to it. Uh, Mitch does it, got the, uh, has the very first uh, question. How you doing, Mitch? Welcome, welcome. Uh, name your favorite Tamina Snuka match. <laughs> so I, I, go, I hit him back. I was like, what? Who is Tamita? Who is Tamita? He's like, oh, just Google her and see what you. So I looked her up and I and I saw the face. I was like, oh, Tamina, yes, okay. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, funny, funny story. I don't have a favorite Tamina match. Uh, I just don't. Um, the only thing that I can possibly think of. I mean, when I saw Tamina, the the only time I remember Tamina is like her like two. Huge things. When they first came into the picture, uh, it was Tamina and the Usos. Uh, they first they all came in together. They attacked uh, the uh, uh, Natalia and uh, her husband. Uh, they were the new heart uh, group, uh, and and they they attacked them. They had a great time with that. That's the only time I remember that. And then after that, I mean, I don't remember Tamina. I mean, I remember when Tamina was a little uh, slimmer. At the time, and you know, now she's um, she probably had children or whatnot, so you know, she uh, is not the, the slimmer uh, to me that, that we uh, grew up with. So, um, and after that, I remember not seeing her a lot, but I do remember, I do remember uh, the situation with the 24 7 uh, situation. So, I don't have a favorite match, but I do have a very funny moment or whatnot, and that was the I uh, guess the double ring ceremony. Uh, with uh, her and uh, Tazawa and Reggie, or was it Reggie? I think it was on there. Reggie and uh, Dana Brooke. Um, they had that, and they were all still fighting over the uh, 24 7 uh, championship. Uh, it was just, it was a hot mess. So that's the only time I remember her is just that situation. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for that question. 
zany question, a question out of the blue, because I swear I do not remember a lot of Tamina. I just don't. Uh, but thank you so much for that question, Mitch Does it. Uh, on from that to Dragon Hunter XD. Why is Cena facing both Solo Sokoa and Jimmy Uso? And he has a lot of uh, question marks right there. Um, I don't know. I, 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 John Cena isn't John Cena from 2015 uh, or, or, you know, well, not even 15, but 20, like, uh, to, 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 to what, 2010, where he was super Cena. I mean, uh, he was consistently winning belts after belts after belts. Uh, so, I I don't understand why they have John Cena um, interacting with the Bloodline. There's a lot of other stories that he could be in uh, on the Raw side. I mean, uh, he can still just be popping around, just, you know, like Roger off of uh, Sister Sister. He could just be popping around saying, hey, you know, how you doing and all this stuff. He could be doing that, being the annoying, annoying person. But now he's in this uh, this situation with the bloodline. It's it's it's. I mean, and hopefully, uh, I I see Cena losing to J uh, Jimmy and 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 Solo uh, from the bloodline. I hope that happens. I hope that probably they have a extra person <clears throat> that can uh, no or mystery uh, opponent or, or partner for John Cena. That's probably what's going to happen. Um, I mean, Cody has been hinting a lot of him going to the SmackDown side. Uh, just, I mean, just dropping Bloodline all up and down of the Raw roster. Uh, Jay is over there on Raw now, so we really don't need uh, Cody on uh, um, the Raw side anymore. So, what more can we see about this? I don't want John Cena just losing and getting buried by uh, uh Solo Sokoa and Jimmy. Uh, I mean, hopefully we get, just like I said, hopefully I think what's going to happen is, uh, I think this is fast lane that's going to happen. I uh, guarantee what's going to happen is that, um, uh, well, I'm not going to guarantee it, but I am going to predict that <clears throat> there are going to, he is going to have a, uh, John Cena is going to have a mystery opponent, I mean, a partner, and his partner is going to be, of course, Cody Rhodes. That's what's going to happen. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for that question. Great question. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, Mr. Greenhead, Mr. Greenhead, do you think Austin Theory completely squashed? Do you think that, let, let's repeat that. <laughs> Mr. Greenhead, Mr. Greenhead, how you doing? How you doing, Mr. Greenhead? Uh, do you think Austin Theory was completely squashed and disrespected by The Rock last Friday night? Not only do I think that uh, that was uh, a squash, uh, I think it was completely and blatantly uh, not cool. I don't think that should have happened uh, to a person like Austin Theory just losing his title. Um, I wish that they had somebody else, like another uh, personality that wasn't Austin Theory, because Austin Theory, to me, I still think is really, really, really good. Uh, I, I, I mean, did you, do you see his, his, his in the ring and then goes in, in the, to that stand up, uh, uh, um, uh, drop kick. It is so beautiful. Um, it's just also theory is just consistently getting bad, uh, uh, um, just writing all day, every day. I'm getting sick and tired of Austin theory, just being played like this fiddle and, and just, I don't know why creative doesn't have a lot for Austin Theory. Um, but back to the thing where, yes, uh, he got put into a uh, 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 freaking, uh, what, uh, rock bottom. Then he got put into a people's uh, elbow. And then uh, freaking, uh, what, the other guy, uh, what's his name? Uh, he came out and did a people's elbow uh, as well. I mean, it was uh, it was a disaster. I mean, are they trying to bury their talent that should be on the top in the next three to five years? <clears throat> I don't know, but it is getting to a point where uh, Austin Theory is becoming completely irrelevant, and that's not a good thing. Um, now, are they trying to put him back on NXT? Probably have him a stint, you know, as the world champion over there. I would love that. I would love that. I think that they pushed uh, Theory uh, over to... 
uh, the WWE main roster a little too fast. I know Vince McMahon had a lot in uh, a lot invested in Austin Theory, which was a good thing. It was a good thing. But, I mean, I think now since the character has fizzled out a lot, it is time for probably him to go back to NXT uh, and just become champion and, and run with that championship for about six to eight months. I mean, it did wonders for Finn Balor when he went over there to the W, uh, to NXT, to reclaim his title and run it, run with it one more time, which he did a great job over there. So, um, you know, but yeah, I truly think that it is getting to a point where uh, Austin Theory should not be getting squashed. Un I mean, yeah, it's The Rock. I mean, everybody, I mean, yeah, you're getting the push by, you're getting rubbed by The Rock. You know, it's a great thing, yes, but The Rock is only going to be there for a limited time. So, I mean, and Austin Theory is still going to be there. So, it's still going to be a, a situation where, yeah, I got beat up at the, and it was like 15, 20 minutes of just all of this happening. I mean, <sighs> great views, great views. I mean, uh, uh, I think it was over 3 million views of, of The Rock being there. But it, it, we need to get uh, better uh, a direction for Austin Theory. Uh, thank you so much for that question. I think it was a great question. I might pin that question. Um, with that, uh, I have Laurel. How we doing, Laurel? Um, in the uh, AEW Women's Division, who can be their next breakout star? Um, that's a great question. That's a great question. Um, the breakout stars of right now would probably um. Who could it be? Who could it be? Uh, I, I, I really don't know right now. I love, I, I, I really love uh, Ruby Soho. I really do. But I mean, they just, they, they, they give, they push her up so high for her to just go right back down. I mean, um, I do like uh, the direction of um, uh, Will. I like Willow Nightingale. Willow Nightingale's not getting a lot of, of, of air time, but I do like Willow Nightingale. I like that young lady, uh, Julia Hart. Julia Hart is doing some really great work. I know she has a match with uh, Chris Statlander, where I think she is probably going to lose to Chris Statlander uh, at Wrestle Dream. Um, I do like Julia. I think she's very uh, uh, she she she's been working her butt off. I will say that. I love I love she's a very pretty young lady. Uh, and I love her, uh, that finisher she has. It is just, I mean, now she's getting into the wrestling aspect of, of, of her being the manager, of course, of, um, the House of Black. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. Um, who, what else that, uh, the blue, Sky Blue. Um, I like Sky Blue a lot. I love her intro. I love the music of Sky Blue. I don't know who did that Sky Blue, uh, music, but it is really good. So if I had to choose a breakout, it would probably it will be those uh those three. It'll be Willow Nightingale, it'll be uh, Sky Blue, and it'll be Julia Hart. Those three would be my breakouts. Uh, thank you so much for that question. Oh, great, great question, great question. Um, after that, I have the Southern Bell. How we doing, Southern Bell? Who should feud with Jade Cargill first in the WWE? Um. Here's my thing. I don't think she should feud with anybody. I think she should just come in, uh, 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 way lace, uh, lay waste to everybody uh, on the wherever she's at, <clears throat> and then just leave or whatnot. Just leave. I mean, just destroy. Even if a champion is in the ring, destroy everybody. Like the stuff that Nia Jax is doing, they should have Jade Cargill do. And... Um, <laughs> And when she does it, you know, she doesn't talk. They give her the Goldberg treatment where uh, they try to get an interview with her and she just doesn't talk to anybody. And then finally, finally, she uh, she gathers all of the women uh, to, to, to get to the ring or whatnot, to, to cover the ring. And she says, I'm going to not only enter the Royal Rumble, but I am going to beat each and every one of you raggedy bitches uh, on, uh, uh, on my way to the Royal Rumble. Women get truly pissed. They get in the ring. They jump the crap out of Jay Cargill, throwing her out of the ring. But 
Jay Cargill still gets the last, last laugh because she will, uh, I do predict that Jay Cargill will uh, win the Royal Rumble of uh, 2023. I do see that happening. Uh, and when that does happen, she's going to say, you raggedy bitches again. I did it. And now I don't know who I'm going to face, but I will figure it out as the as the months roll on on the way to WrestleMania. So that's how I would plan it. Uh, I wouldn't have her have a first few. She would just be the baddest woman uh, just running and laying waste to everybody. That would be the situation I would have a uh, Jade Cargill do. Uh, the, but, uh, great question. Thank you so much for that question, Southern Bell. Uh, Mitch does it. Mitch does it. He has a, another Jade Cargill question. Um, when and where would you have Jade Cargill debut and against who? Pretty much the exact same thing. I wouldn't have her uh, feud with anybody. I would literally have her uh, just uh, lay waste to everybody uh, on Raw and SmackDown. And eventually, she will debut on uh, Royal Rumble uh, being probably number two, number three, and just uh, just destroying and uh, winning the uh, women's uh, Royal Rumble. That's, that's what I would do. Uh, thank you so much, bitch. Same question, but it was kind of uh, swerved in the same little direction. But same question. Thank you so much uh, for that question. Um, only Nike. How you doing, Only Nike? I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, it's good to see you back. Uh, WWE doesn't really have any more legendary stars uh, they can bring back to do matches. What will the company do in the future, being that The Rock... STSA, Cena, and others are a lot are getting uh, older. Um, they're getting older. Yes, uh, they are getting older. I will say that. Yes. Now, um, I think legends come and go all day, every day. Uh, people get older as we speak. Um, I think they have enough people to, uh, when they get older, they're gonna retire and then they'll come back. Um, I, I just think that, I mean, Cena, yeah, he's getting older, uh, The Rock, yeah, he's getting older, Stone Cold, damn sure is getting older with his bad knees and everything, but I guarantee that they, if, if asked to come back to the WWE just for a run or one off, they would do it in a heartbeat. Um, the older people, I, here's the thing about me, I get very cringy when it comes to the super older people coming back to try to take a bump, I don't like that at all. I'm not a big fan of that. But I truly, honestly think that um, with the situation that the WWE has a, just a slew of people, I guarantee they will have enough abundant people to come back um, when they get older. To I mean, they just they keep recycling. They keep recycling. So, I guarantee that they'll have, they'll be fine in that department. I truly think it will. Now, when you get to the Ric Flair age, when you really can't move, that's the situation. Be like, uh, pump the brakes. That should not have happened. You know, I mean, once again, you have Batista who still looks awesome. He still looks awesome. I mean, that's a lot of people. So, I guarantee they have abundant, abundant enough. But I do thank you for that question. Great question. Great question. Uh, only Nike. I uh, have a next question from Dragon Hunter XD. How we doing, Dragon Hunter? Uh, should the referee at the John Moxley and Ray Phoenix match for the international title be fired because of the situation with John Moxley and the concussion? Um, no, I don't think he should be fired. I don't even think he should be fined. But I do think that he should have been talked to by Tony Khan um, and... Uh, the officials, the other officials, um, that was a very devastating match. I mean, you can see John Moxley saying, go ahead and pin me, get it over with, get it over with. You can actually see that. You can actually see him cussing the referee out as well. Um, I, I, I don't think he should have been fired. No, no. I just think that, you know, uh, more training should be upon him. Uh, but that was just completely devastating. You can see the match. You can see John Moxley not moving. You can, I mean, you can, it was just that cringe. 
I mean, congratulations to Ray Phoenix, but goodness gracious, do you see this? If you haven't seen the match, I guarantee they probably don't even have a match anymore uh, with this, um, this, 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 uh, uh, I mean, it was just bad. It was just bad. He dropped him on the head. I, no, I guarantee it was an accident. It wasn't something that, you know, Ray Phoenix intentionally done. But see, this is the where the point the referee should have uh, just could have came in and just put the X up, just put the X up and called it a day. I mean, uh, we would have had a storyline where Ray Phoenix would have been upset. Uh, they they could have came back to this match. Uh, but now, you know, John doesn't have his title anymore. Ray Phoenix has the title. And it's just it's just a lot of craziness with that situation. And it happens. It happens. Once again, this is not an AEW situation. This is a situation with a lot of other or uh, federations. And and I think they have different protocols in different uh, federations. But with this one, this one was very, very not cool. Uh, uh, just like I said, I don't think he should have been fired, but I think he should have been uh, a really bad tongue lashing uh, after the match. Like, what was going on in your brain? Why didn't this stop? But uh, I do thank you for the question. Great question. Great question for that. Uh, Dragon Hunter. Uh, after that, uh, I do have a Southern Bell. How we doing, Southern Bell? Uh, since Matt Riddle is no longer with the company, uh, what should they? What should Drew McIntyre do? Uh, we already saw it, I, and I've I've been said turn him heel. It looks like he is now turning heel. I think they are still having a situation with his contract. I truly think he probably is done with the WWE. But he's going, but they're going to ride the heel train uh, with him uh, all the way. Uh, I don't think Shinsuke Nakamura is going to win the title uh, at Fastlane against uh, Seth Rollins for the world title. So we do need another heel for Seth Rollins to, uh, to, to, to go against. The only person I can possibly think of as of right now, since Seth Rollins is literally on his last leg would either be Damian Priest, Damian Priest cashing in at Fastlane, or his next opponent would be Drew McIntyre. Uh, the the better would be the Drew McIntyre situation. I mean, uh, uh, Damian Priest has plenty of time, plenty of time to cash it in at all times. So he has plenty of time to do that. So Drew McIntyre would be that next person, not only to be the opponent, but to beat Seth Rollins uh, for that world title. That would be my prediction as of right now uh, with that. But yeah, uh, Drew, um, the, that Drew and and Matt Riddle situation was going to be bad anyway. Uh, if you don't know anything about me, I really am not a Matt Riddle fan. I really wasn't a fan of even the RK Bro stuff. I mean, Matt Riddle is just not that guy that I just cater to when it comes to uh, in ring performance. His uh, talking abilities, just everything that he does, just not a fan of. Um, so I'm happy that um, that Matt Riddle and Drew McIntyre are no longer a tag team. Well, you know, Matt Riddle's no longer with the company. I hate that. But uh, they are no longer a tag team, and he can go and be a singles person, which he truly deserves to be. Uh, thank you so much for that question. Great question. Another Southern Bell question. Uh, how we doing? How we doing? How you doing? <laughs> uh, Randy Orton looks like he's coming back pretty soon. Who should he feud with first? First, I don't even know where he's located it. I don't know if he's on Raw or SmackDown. Uh, I think he's on Raw. Um, the first feud, if he's on, of course, it, it's always that one person. But uh, if he had to choose, if I had to choose anybody, it would probably be The Miz if it's on Raw. <clears throat> they always kind of throw Miz into the the, the loop of being uh, uh, first opponents of people. I would have said uh, Dolph Ziggler, but unfortunately Dolph Ziggler is no longer with the company uh, due to the layoffs. Uh, but I would probably, yeah, I would probably guarantee I would choose um, I would choose the Miz over there on uh, the uh, SmackDown. I mean, on the Raw side. Now on the SmackDown side, um, it's getting kind of tricky. I would probably even do the reverse of the Miz 
and uh, do a Grayson Waller. I'll put him uh, as his first opponent, bringing him into the Grayson Waller effect, uh, just telling him that he's old, his back is gone, I guarantee I can beat you. Uh, that would be a great little three-match uh, situation with him and um, and uh, 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 Grayson Waller. I think Grayson Waller is, is, is truly one of the future uh, people for uh, the WWE. So I would probably have him feud with him if he's on SmackDown and The Miz if he's on Raw. Uh, good question. Thank you so much for that question, uh, Southern Miss Southern Bell. Uh, Laurel, Laurel is back with another question. Uh, do you truly think it's time for Ilio Dragunov to take the title off of Camelo Hayes, or do you think it's Trick Williams' time? Uh, I will say yes to both of those. Uh, I think Ilio Dragunov deserves that title now more than ever, um, <clears throat> but I truly think it is time for uh, Trick to get his uh, get his in as well. Um, I think the person that should take that title, the North American title, off of Dominic Mysterio would be Trick. I think Trick is a great addition uh, to being a, a world champion. Uh, and him having that uh, that North American title uh, would uh, help him get to the level of what Carmelo Hayes is doing. I think Carmelo should be on his way out of NXT. I think he has done as much as he could over there on the black and gold brand, and it is time for him to go to the main roster, where he should go to, um, he should, here's my thing, I think he should feud with Bobby Lashley being the very first thing, they want him to be a part of this new Hurt Business situation, he's trying to make it his own person, he's trying to be his own man, and with that situation, I think that he wants to just do it alone, uh, Bobby is just like, yo, you need to be with me. I can get you to the mountaintop, uh, but with my guidance, I can get you there. He's like, no, I kind of want to be do it myself or whatnot, and 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 that's where the 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 tension lies, and that's where the new her business <clears throat> will attack him and and just try to sway him to come into there until we get a match between uh, your boy uh, Carmelo Hayes. And uh, Bobby Lashley, uh, I think that would be a great uh, addition for him to be in. But yeah, Ilio Dragunov, he would be a great world champion. I really do like Ilio. I love his mic skills. I love his wrestling style. He is really, really good. Uh, and like I said, Trick Williams should win that title off of Dominic Mysterio and eventually become the world champion over there in NXT. Um, thank you so much for that question. Oh, great question. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, so, uh, the next question, uh, Mr. Greenhead, uh, did the Young Bucks and Hangman Page truly need to beat the Acclaim? Uh, do you, uh, have, uh, do you have a trios to have the trios championships? Um, do they have the titles? I don't I don't know, but but if they do have the titles, I am livid behind that. Uh, I don't like that situation. Uh, them uh, they claim just uh, getting those titles. If they do have the titles, uh, I would hate that because uh, that was supposed to be the resurgent. Uh, of the research of the acclaimed, followed by Daddy Ass himself, uh, Billy Gunn. So it would be a, a really sucky situation that is going on. Uh, uh, followed by that, Hangman Page <clears throat> is what he he's having a, his own match uh, over there at Wrestle Dream between uh, Swerve Strickland. So if he is in a solo uh, situation, why oh why? Is it that he's uh, doing one-on-ones and he is a trios champion? They should be uh, focusing on more opponents if that is the case. Um, I mean, it's the EVPs doing the EVP thing. I mean, it is what it is. I truly think the House of Black was a great uh, trios, followed by the Acclaim uh, being a great uh, trios champions as well. Um, I mean, the inaugural champions were 
pretty much the elite all together. Uh, it was uh, the, what, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. So, I mean, it's just uh, EVPs doing EVP stuff. CM Punk is right. It is what it is. Uh, I'm I'm just Team Punk all day. So, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, but thank you so much for that question. Thank you so much for that question. Mitch does it. Mitch does it. Um, what was a better year for wrestling? Uh, was it the uh, 2016 or 2020? So, uh, uh, 2016, if you looked, uh, I looked at the 2016 uh, and what, what was good uh, in the 2016. I think it was CM Punk uh, still uh, champion or I think he was facing The Rock. He was on his way to facing The Rock uh, for, uh, the world title at, um, uh, he was, yeah, uh, for at Wrestle, no, at, uh, the Royal Rumble, which The Rock did win, uh, changing the title to this ugly toy Mattel type title after that. Um, also during the, uh, 2016, uh, we had the, the situation where, um, Paul Heyman, was uh, with CM Punk, of course. Punk turned heel. Um, just uh, it was oh, and um, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan uh, was the uh, commissioner of no, yeah, was he the commissioner of SmackDown? This was the notorious uh, Miz uh, situation where the Miz just had a beautiful promo on uh, Daniel Bryan. This is when. It was huge over there in the uh, SmackDown side, where SmackDown was dominating uh, Raw in the ratings. Everybody was loving SmackDown at this time because Shane was doing such a phenomenal job over there. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, but uh, if you go from there to the 2022, uh, and uh, just bloodline, just bloodline stuff. Bloodline, I think, is just one of those things that is just so freaking good. I think that without the Bloodline, I think I would have said the 2016 because I'm a huge CM Punk fan. But, 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 it has to be the 2022. All day, every day. I think 2022, <clears throat> the Bloodline is just killing everything in that time. That was the height of of Cody Rhodes. Uh, I mean, Cody Rhodes was doing a great job over there. Uh, won the Royal Rumble. Uh, now, I will say the build to the match wasn't the best, but the WrestleMania match was really good. Hands down, I would say 2022. Bloodline is just, the Bloodline storyline is to me one of the best, one of the best, best, best story angles out there ever. Uh, in wrestling history, hands down, it has to be 2022. Um, so, uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, uh, uh Mitch does it. Thank you so much, uh, for that question. Uh, after that, I have Dragon Hunter XD. Has the EO Sky t uh, title run, uh, became a little more interesting after the defeat of Asuka? Uh, yes, I do, because once again, uh, the EO Sky, uh, uh, reign was really not taking steam like it should have been, but now it's getting to a point where I'm really starting to get intrigued because we do see a situation where EO Sky kind of wins clean against Asuka, and Asuka is one of those people who is really, really a strong uh, 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 women's, uh, uh, was a really strong champion. Not this go-round, but she was a really strong champion altogether. EO Sky was really good over there on the... Uh, the black and gold brand uh, when she was, I think she had the title over there, but now I see it progressing. I see the story getting really better now. We have Charlotte uh, trying to have the back, uh, trying to make everything kind of even. Of course, we have the crazy Shotzi still somewhere in the background looking on as well uh, to try to attack Bailey. It's just, it's getting really good now, and it all evolves around EO Sky. So they're doing a great job now. I do like the situation, uh, what they have in store for us. I can't wait to see what happens on uh, SmackDown this Friday. 
Thank you so much for that question. Great question. Uh, after that, I have a Mr. Greenhead question. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, what did you think of the Paige and Soraya uh, versus Tony Storm uh, women's uh, well, Paige or Soraya um, versus Tony Storm uh, women's championship match at Grand Slam? I thought it was really good. I, I'm re I'm really starting to love the Tony Storm uh, where she uh, watch out for the shoe. You know, I love duck for the shoe. I really like where she is incomplete without that title. It is really fun <clears throat> to see that. And I'm starting to see the development of Soraya or Paige, if you want to call her Paige. But I do see Soraya uh, getting better in the ring. Uh, day by day, month by month, it is getting really better. I do enjoy her uh, her uh, skills now. Uh, she's getting to the point where I can believe that she is the world champion. Uh, the outcast is just still in disarray, uh, but we will see what happens uh, with this. The storyline, I think, is just, just fun. It's just fun. Uh, and, and I'm really starting to enjoy now the women's world. Uh, title uh, situation over there. It's getting better. Um, I don't know who's writing for them now, but they're doing a good job. Keep it up, you guys. Keep it up over there. Uh, other than that, we have one more question, and that's going to go to Laurel. Uh, did it, uh, Do you think that the late Bray Wyatt could have ever eventually leveled up to the character of The Undertaker? Not only do I think he would have leveled up to uh, The Undertaker, I think he would have surpassed him. Um, I truly think Bray Wyatt was a generational talent. Um, I do think a lot of what he did, uh, not even in the ring. I think uh, his promos uh, when he was the Swamp Man, from Swamp Man to God Eater to God Eater to uh, the uh, just the Bray being the Mr. Rogers thing uh, or the fiend. I, I truly think that, and from that to just regular Bray uh, and Uncle Howdy, I really wanted to see how they were going to uh, get this all taken care of. I truly think that Bray would have surpassed uh, The Undertaker. Um, I mean, it was just, I, I think that he is one of the, he, oh, I mean, Let's talk about the in-ring. His in-ring performances, I think, were the best. I mean, hands down, he was a great wrestler. I mean, just the the Wyatt, the Wyatt uh, family faction. An un, I mean, probably top ten uh, of all time when it comes to the Wyatt family. I mean, hands down, uh, Bray was just that guy. Bray was, I mean, world champion. He didn't even care when he when he won the championship uh, the first time in the Elimination Chamber. It was like, he was like, okay, who cares? <laughs> like, who cares? It was just that good. It was just that good. I truly enjoyed um, just, and, and I promise you, I was so emotional when he came back with that first promo. It was just so good. So good. Um... And I just hate that he passed. You know, just like I said, I hate that he passed. What a great talent. A uh, great writing uh, crew. I mean, I would. I, I think the movie that he produced or uh, was starred in or something, I think that should be coming out soon. Or if it did, I don't know. I would like to check it out and see what's going on with it. But once again, I think Bray would have surpassed The Undertaker uh, by any, any means necessary. I think he would have. Uh, but with, without that, without, uh, without, with that last question, thank you so much, you guys, for watching the show. Thank you so much, uh, for putting in your questions. Once again, you can get your questions answered, uh, on the, uh, show for next Friday. Don't forget, I do put the, that feed out on Sunday at 10 o'clock. So you have until Sunday, until probably Wednesday to get your questions in and your boy will answer those questions, okay? Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, also, um, what else? Uh, 
if you want to find out where I, where I am, uh, go to the information tab. I will uh, let you guys uh, update on all of that. Usually, like I said, my top three questions I usually put on all of the other social sites that I'm on. So you can go check that out as well. Tomorrow, you will get episode two of my gripe. Okay? I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. Until next time. Until next time. Well, well, the best is truly yet to come first. How about that? The best is truly yet to come until next time. Until next time. Love, peace, and of course, of course, of course, of course, wrestling.